Rob Bibby creates hand-thrown pottery masterpieces from his workshop in Northamptonshire, England. I've been a potter most of my adult life. I'm now 71 and I'm still doing it from my workshop in Wood Newton and I run a couple of pottery classes for local people um, as well. The production of a clay teapot begins with, you've guessed it, clay. White, wet earthen clay is prepared by kneading it thoroughly. The clay is mixed with paper pulp to give it strength. The kneading continues until all of the streaks are blended and it is a consistent grey colour. Clay can be reused and recycled, so this stage is key for removing any unwanted lumpy bits. Clay can be reshaped and reused often. It can be kept damp by storing it in a sealed plastic bag and can be stored for two weeks without the quality being affected. And next up is the throwing stage. Throwing is essentially what happens at the potter's wheel. Clay is put onto the centre of the wheel and then the potter can begin his delicate art of throwing. He works the spinning clay using his hands, but also can use different tools to create certain shapes and smoothness. Here, he's using a credit card that is ideal for shaping the clay in a consistent way. Through the years of practice and a few wobbly pots, an experienced potter knows exactly when the clay is ready to be shaped when on the wheel. It takes time and um, uh, practice before you get good and confident at it. I think a potter gets better all, his, all your life. You, you can carry on getting more confident about throwing. He uses a damp sponge to keep the clay wet and malleable. When happy with the shape, a cheese wire is used to cleanly remove the pot from the wheel in one swift motion. For the lid and the spout, the general technique is the same, just the shaping is different. Spouts are made by making a cone shape. The tip of the spout needs to be nice and thin so that the tea doesn't dribble. If you've ever had a teapot that dribbles tea as you pour, it's most likely because the spout tip is too thick. Of course, this is a very delicate art, as making the tip too thin will most probably cause breakages further down the line. This pot could do with a steady base that won't make it wobble. For this, a foot ring is formed that will add stability. This is achieved by trimming the pot with a turning tool. Slowly but surely, the foot ring takes shape. From here, the pot is stamped with the all-important seal of approval. Of course, with everything being made by hand, pottery and throwing is never an exact science. No pot is ever the same, and trial and error can play a big part in a pot's creation. Here, our potter is measuring up the lids and tidying their edges with cutting tools so that they can better fit their pots. He also pushes a hole through each lid so that they can release the steam of the delicious hot tea they will soon hold. The teapot itself can also be made bigger for the lids to fit. Slight and careful adjustments are made by trimming away just millimetres at a time until the lid can fit snugly in place. Perfect. The spout, which has had a little time to dry, is then cut at an angle to fit the pot. The potter then places it on the pot and marks out where it should sit. In the centre of this area, he punctures holes into the clay of the teapot so that it can catch the tea leaves as the tea passes through the spout. To ensure the spout stays firmly in place, grooves are marked both into the pot and the spout itself. This basically gives it all a bit more grip to stick. When you're joining bits of clay, um, so for example a teapot spout or a handle, it's a good idea to score the surface of the clay and dig in um, a certain amount of slip, which is basically liquid clay, and um, you use those like a, a sort of glue, and you dig them into the surface of the clay, um, s scoring both contact points uh, before you actually join on the spout, for example. The forming of the teapot is almost complete. Just a few finishing touches and embellishments are made now, including this rather fancy handle. With this complete, it's time for the pot to take its first trip to the kiln. The kiln will harden the clay using intense heat, totally drying it out. Once the kiln has finished working its magic, the painting process can begin. This really is an art, as we can see by this elegant design that our potter seems to be able to achieve almost instinctively. Fancy! When he's happy with his paint job, the pot is dipped in a gloss emulsion. Although it looks like it's covering up his carefully painted design, just wait and see what happens in a moment. The teapot is placed in the kiln again and heated once more. The heat in the kiln will set the special gloss and cause it to become transparent, sealing the design. 
And look at that, an amazingly shiny pot full of colour and handcrafted skill. With a final quality check complete, the pot is ready to pour that perfect cup of tea. You get a lot of satisfaction out of making um, things in clay and also out of using handmade things. People like that. Pottery, a timeless, wicked invention.